sir. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. God, I've been faithful to me, to you, and to us all in Jesus' name. He is a faithful God. Everything he has promised is true. And the worthiness of Christ that makes all his promises faithful and performed. That faithfulness will work in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I want to assure you that God is here. There with you. Here with me. There with the people online, everywhere. God is here. God is there. His wonders to perform. Uh, perform those wonders in your life, even tonight in Jesus' name. Every promise he has given, every word he has spoken, every prophecy he has declared, his power, his faithfulness, his goodness will support everything that will be done in your life, in our lives, in Jesus' name. Wonders in your life. The wonder of salvation. The wonder of healing. The wonder of deliverance. The wonder of His word, His promise being performed in your life, in Jesus' name. We've been in the book of Daniel. We've gone through chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. Now we're in chapter 5. And as we look at chapter 5, God has a word. And when he speaks the word, he stands by that word to fulfill that word. And the word of God will be spoken to you tonight. And the word will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Give me a good alpha location. Amen. Father, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. What a glorious God you are, a great God you are. A mighty, powerful God, creator, redeemer you are. We're asking, oh Lord, tonight, you fulfill your word in every life in Jesus' name. Your wonders to perform. And your wonders in every life, the young and the old, the men and the women, the people here and the people everywhere, we pray that your word of wonder will come upon every life tonight in Jesus' name. Touch everyone. Turn everyone around and do wonders in every life, even today by the manifestation of your power in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen before you sit down. God has blessed you. Sit down in the promise and the blessing of the Lord. We're coming to Daniel chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 26, 27, and verse 28. We're looking at Daniel chapter 5, reading from verse 26. This is the interpretation. This is the interpretation. Everybody has... Everybody here, perhaps, has a Bible. Many people have the Bible, and it, like the eunuch of Ethiopia, we read. And then Philip comes and he says, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I understand? Except some man should guide me. We need interpretation, we need revelation. And we need the application of the word of God. It wasn't only Belshazzar that saw the writing on the wall. And then he couldn't understand all the people there. 
in that feast, in that hall, none of them understood. And not only them, us as well. Our writing may not be on the wall. Our writing is in the scripture. It's in the book of God. And Philip is asking us, the preacher is asking us, do you understand? What you read, how can I understand except some man, a teacher, a preacher, a pastor, an evangelist, an interpreter of the word will interpret the word unto me. That's why we're here, that you'll get the proper interpretation of the word. This is the interpretation of the thing, meaning God has numbered thy kingdom, Belshazzar, and finished it. Verse 27, it said, Take hell, thou art wage in the balances, and art found wanting. Thou art found wanting. It was put on the scale, and wage on the scale. It's not talking about the scale that tells us our kind of wage. The water there, the matter there, the bones there, the blood, everything combined together. And then whether we're under wage or we're over wage or we're obese, not that one, is weighing its action, weighing its life, weighing all that he has done, all that he has been, and all that was doing at that time, it was wage and found lacking. Wage and found wanting. Wage and found unworthy. When God weighs us, we're either wanting or we're worthy. Enoch was wage, he was worthy. Noah was wage in God's balances, he was worthy. That's how. Enoch was raptured, taken to heaven because he was not wanting. And that's why God gave the ark of salvation unto Noah because he was waged and found worthy. And Abel, and Abraham, and Moses, and Joshua, and Samuel, they were waged and they were found worthy. And then you come to the people of the new covenant, the people of the new testament, they were waged. And as God, the same God, that God who is here, that God is wonders to perform, that God that weighs the life of everyone and weighs the action of everyone, that God is still here. As you come to the new covenant, he weighs people like John, like Peter, like Peter, and by grace, because of Calvary for them, and because of what Christ made for them, Christ became the Savior their substitute it became their final sacrifice and whatever was wanting in their lives christ supplied and they went from being wanting unto being worthy that's what the lord can do for you today that when he weighs you and you connect with Christ, and you connect with your Redeemer, and you connect with the Savior, your substitute, then because of Him, you're found worthy. He'll find you worthy. I said He'll find you worthy. Worthy of His salvation. Worthy of His righteousness. Worthy of His grace and His goodness upon your life. Other people, those who think by themselves, they'll be worthy. Uh -uh. It doesn't happen that way. Alone without Christ, alone without conversion, alone without the Spirit of God, alone without the aid and the help of God, like Belshazzar, you'll be weighed and found wanting. But when you come to Christ, and Christ puts his righteousness, his redemption, his forgiveness, his salvation in your life. Then with Christ, Christ in you, and you in Christ, 
your wage and you find what the, the topic tonight each man wage by the almighty found wanting or found worthy which side will you be where will you stand if you come on alone by yourself without his forgiveness without his freedom without a salvation without a the conversion that christ himself works in our life you'll be waged and found wanting but you'll come to christ in christ alone i stand in christ i believe i trust and I want what he has done at Calvary to come into my life. And then I receive Christ is mine and I am his. He has saved me and he has loved me. And your name is written in the book of life. Then you are wage and found worthy. Each man, each person on the face of the earth, you are waged by the Almighty. You'll either be found wanting or you'll be found worthy. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, Paris, thy kingdom is divided because it was wanting. He didn't pray. He didn't seek the face of the Lord. He didn't search for forgiveness. He didn't search for salvation. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. That's what we are looking at today. And I pray as you cook up with Christ, as you link up with Christ, as you are reconciled unto Christ, that God ever present, that, that God ever faithful, that God that fulfills the promise of his word, he'll find you worthy. He'll solve your problem. He'll change your life. He'll turn everything around in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at three things here now. Number one, the irreverent feast and awful or restrained profanity. We find Belshazzar and we find his feast. And it was irreverent. No respect, no regard for the Almighty God. He gave the leeway, the green light to the corruption in his life. And he manifested an awful or a strange profanity. Number two, the irresistible forthrightness of an awe inspiring, uncompromising preacher. That was Daniel. Always like that. Morning, afternoon, and evening, Daniel always uncompromising. And he will tell the mind of God. Daniel, he was a person, the only one equipped in the land of Babylon to reach the writing on the wall and faithfully, without any fear, without favor, without timidity, without shivering, without fearing the face of the emperor of the time, he declared the word unto him irresistible for tritness of an awe inspiring uncompromising preacher number three the inevitable fulfillment of awesome unchangeable prophecies many prophecies in the world and those prophecies are awesome for Beshaza, awesome for believers, awesome. For you tonight, the blessing of God, the promise of God, awesome. And those prophecies, and those promises, and those pronouncements, and those declarations of the Lord, awesome, unchangeable, and the moment they are pronounced, and you believe and accept, the promise of God will be yes and amen in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at number one here. Number one is the irreverent feast, an awesome, unrestrained 
profanity. Why are we looking at that? We need to look at that to understand the action of God on a man. The action of God on a family. The action of God on the prince, the power, the authority in Babylon. The action of God that responds to the life of a man, a woman here on earth. Why did this happen? Well, that's what we're saying. Why did that come upon the man? That's what we're saying. Why was his kingdom divided? And why was his life finished without any mercy? That's what we're looking at in Daniel chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand that's bad enough but he didn't stop there look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says Belshazzar whilst he tasted the wine he commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and the princes and his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Not only that he was profane, not only that he was filthy, not only that he was defiled, he was also an agent of defilement. He called all those people together, his wives, bad enough, one, it's what God had ordained, but he had many. Then he called them and concubines was. He didn't only have wives, he had concubines. One wife was not enough for him. Two, three were not enough for him. And all the wives, the plurality of wives, they were not sufficient. He also had concubines. And then he called all the people. All the princes, all the wives, all the concubines, that they shall come and drink therein. Bad, bad, bad enough. Look at verse 3. It tells us in verse 3, then they brought the golden vessels which were taken out of the temple of the house of God. Can you see the profanity? Can you see the indecency? Can you see all the evil that the man did? But while we are pointing one finger to him, the other four fingers are pointed your direction. Because as he was profane, many people in the world, they are profane like that, and they dwell in profanity, and they dwell in evil. Their lives are blasphemous against the Lord. And then it says, it's from the the house of the God that was at Jerusalem and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank, drank in them look at verse 4 now in verse 4 they drank wine and praised the God of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone have you noticed his father I dressed up, I seen that idol in chapter 2. He had seen the head of gold, and now they praise the God of gold. He had seen the breast and the arms of silver. Now they praise the God of silver. He had seen the trunk of brass, and they praise the God of brass, and then the God of iron and of wood and of stone. That's the profanity of the man. The profanity of those women, wives and concubines, and the profanity of those princes. We're told then in verse 5, in verse 5, in the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand. God was now about to ask, can you blame God if men became corrupt, corrupted, Corrupting? Can you blame God if men, women are defiled and defiling? Can you blame God if men and women are profane? 
are dirty, are corrupted, and they change the glory of God into something which is uh, disgraceful. Can you blame God? That's why he brought judgment. Now we're talking about them. Let me talk about the world in which we live. Micah chapter 7. I'm looking at verse 3. In Micah chapter 7 verse 3. That they may do evil with both hands and a slave. The people in our world, you included, because some have sinned and come short of the glory of God, they do evil with both hands. They do evil earnestly. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. That's a world. And that is the condition of everyone in the world. The defiled, the defiling. They are profane and they influence other people to be profane. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, The best of them is as a prayer. The most upright is sharper than the sun edge. The day of thy watchmen and thy visitation cometh now shall be there perplexity. That's the world in which we are living. All have seen and come short of the glory of God. Not only that, all have seen, they do evil with both hands, with their heart, with their mind, with their understanding, with their intelligence, with their education. Everything they have, they put into doing evil. And they put into the great dressing God, defiling God, and defiling other people people and making them defile. We're told in the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Belshazzar was walking in the vanity of his mind. The men, the women around you and yourself, you have been walking in the vanity of your mind. And vanity of vanities, all is vanity. From my great, great, great grandfathers, they were corrupted at the time of Noah. And then after Noah, they continue in the profanity and corruption. And we have inherited that for them. We have the depravity. And we have the dirty things and the defiling things. And our lives as God weighs us in the balance, in the scale of eternity. Our lives are not acceptable unto him. Because we have been walking in the vanity of our mind. In verse 18. Verse 18 says, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, separated from the life of God. What's the life of God? A life of love. No, we don't have love, we have hatred. What's the life of God? A life of holiness and righteousness. What's her life? Unrighteousness and on holiness, walking against alienated and separated from the life of God. What's the life of God? The life of truth. But our life is the life of deception. We're liars. We lie with action. We lie with the word of mouth. And we lie in everything that we do. We are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Belshazzar was blind, blind to his own goodness, blind to his own prosperity and blind to the favor of God and the virtue. He ought to manifest before the Lord and everyone on earth is also like that, blind. 
blind to salvation, blind to righteousness, blind to an eternity with the Almighty God. And it tells us in verse 19, verse 19, who have been past feeling, past feeling. Now it's talking about the generality of people, and it's applicable to Beshazzar. Past feeling, all he did, he took those vessels of the Lord holy vessels to worship the Lord and they took that from the uh, from Jerusalem the headquarters of the of God Almighty as the people worship the Lord and now what he did all those wives together all those concubines together all those counselors together all those princes together what he did he did without did even any feeling of guilt any feeling of condemnation and there are people like that today they have got to the point they lie no guilt they misbehave no guilt they, they gather women together, almost like headmaster of a school of girls, of ladies, no guilt, concubines, wives and concubines, no guilt, drinking and drunkenness, no guilt, smoking, either they are smoking cigarettes or smoking marijuana or weed, there is no guilt, all the evil that they do, and they ill treat other people, they are cruel, and they have, have no guilt because they have been past feeling and they've given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness now in ecclesiastes chapter 7 reading from verse 17 ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 17 be not over much wicked Beshaza, when you married one wife and you even married in the wrong way god left you alone he didn't even bother you at that time second wife third wife god left you alone didn't even bother you concubines concubines and god was saying maybe he will repent maybe he will see the repentance of his father nebuchadnezzar and then he'll wake up he'll come to himself and then princes and then he gathered them together then he made a feast then he said go take all those vessels in the house of god i am going to drink out of them i'm going to spite the god of heaven but be not over much wicked my friend you're going and going you're over speeding and you're getting near the point of no return be not over much wicked liar you've been lying about this and lying about that and now the next lie you tell against somebody that will deal with you be not over much wicked you have been running after women the person's wife poor man's wife and the fellow knows but the fellow can do nothing against you and then you go to that you go to that and now you're picking another woman and the husband of that woman he will not show you only pepper he will show you death be not over much wicked you have been drinking and drinking and now the end of the year is coming and you're spinning up it's like you're in a hurry to die you're in a hurry to go to hell be not over much wicked you have been disrespectful and you have been dishonoring you've done it to this and the people said leave him alone it's like that that's his life and now you want to do another one and this one may cost you your life that's why it says be not over much wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time Beshaza, this way you are going. Be not over much wicked. Why don't you repent? And the Lord is talking to you tonight and is saying, Enough is enough. See what you have done. See where you have been. See what your life has been. Be not over much wicked. Halt. Stop. Turn around. Repent and throw your hands up and say, Lord, I surrender. But if at all you have heard, at all you have seen, you still keep on and keep on and keep on, the road of the sinner is slippery. 
and you might just fly like that and something coming behind you will run over you and you are gone and where will you spend eternity be not overmuch wicked neither be thou foolish why shouldest thou die before thy time the special and those are the, the unbelievers today and the life they live and this you today see the way you have been going the irreverent feast and awful unrestrained profanity let's come to number two now he saw that at writing on the wall with all the education of babylon and with all the development and civilization early civilization of babylon the man could not read the handwriting on the wall because he wasn't a child of god and it's the writing of god and you cannot read the writing and the language of heaven here on earth since you don't have the spirit of god to interpret unto you and eventually when that hand appeared and he saw the writing he knew because he saw the hand he saw just the finger writing he didn't see the rest of the body holding that hand and he wrote and wrote and wrote and then all the taste for alcohol everything went all the pleasure and desire for women and prostitutes and uh, and for concubines all the pleasure went and all the earthly desires everything went he began to shake he began to tremble and he wanted an interpreter and all the magicians they couldn't read they tried they made an effort that's what they always do they get into a religious language a religious mood a religious atmosphere and they do all their rigmaroles but they could not they didn't understand the writing they need to understand what was there on the wall until the queen came and said the Shasa, there is somebody in the kingdom he used to interpret for your father nebuchadnezzar his interpretation brought repentance and his interpretation was always truthful and factual and straight to the point called Daniel and then they called Daniel and as they called uh, Daniel the man uh, was still promising uh, I'll give you this I'll give you that if you interpret for me let's look at Daniel chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 10 now the queen uh, by reason uh, of the words of the king and his laws came uh, into the banquet house and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. That's what you always say, live forever. The man died that night. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee. Let not, not let thy countenance be changed. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, there is a man in thy kingdom how wonderful would it be that they can point to you if you're a true believer you were a believer in the time of nebuchadnezzar you were a believer in the regime of the government that passed away and now today you have not backsliding you have not compromised you have not become fearful you have not become timid you're still the man you were with the salvation of god with the holiness and the purity of god and with the uncompromising spirit that a child of god ought to retain you're still the practical positive penetrating preacher that you used to be the race a man can we say that about you or have you compromised have you succumbed have you submitted your right your responsibility and your spirit and your fervency and your forthrightness have you cowered down have you bowed to them as the system of the world taking taking care of you that now you cannot stand you wobble 
you are afraid, you're timid, you cannot open your mouth and declare the truth. Now you are Sunday, Sunday Christian, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you are part of the world. But Daniel, the grace a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy ghost and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of the magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the Susia then in verse 12 in verse 12 for as much as an excellent spirit when somebody is saved the kind of spirit that comes in his life excellent spirit when somebody is sanctified and is made holy and he gives his life he wills his life to the lord without reservation he has the excellent spirit when somebody is saved and sanctified and baptized in the holy ghost and he has the power the power to declare the truth anywhere and everywhere and excellent spirit was found in him what kind of spirit do you have do you have the excellent spirit that says that does excellent things are you truly born again are you really a child of god and anywhere you are anywhere you stand do you have that excellent spirit and then it says he had understanding he had knowledge and the interpretation of dreams and the showing of hard sentences the showing the discovering the revealing of hard sentences the solving doubts where were found in the same daniel whose whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. And so Daniel was called, and Daniel now told the king, Keep your gift to yourself, but I will show you the interpretation. We need faithful interpreters in our churches. We need faithful preachers in our churches that will tell the sinner what God has said on the final edge of the sinner. We don't need motivators. We don't need liars on the pulpit. We don't need people that will purge sinners at the back on the pulpit. We don't need entertainers on the pulpit. We need preachers interpreters evangelists that will tell the truth and the truth is we don't need people that will make sinners laugh and laugh their lives unto hell we need people that will stand now let daniel be called and he will show the interpretation and he came up and it was light you become light i said you become light Amen. Amen. Don't you love the truth? If you love the truth, raise up your hand. Do you want entertainment? I said you want entertainment? No. If we're going to get saved, we need interpretation. If we're going to get the fulfillment of the promise of God, we need the proper interpretation of the word of God. That's why we have the crusade the gospel for every creature we're not here to entertain drunkards entertain smokers entertain womanizers entertain adulterers entertain the people on their way to hell we come here to arrest them and to turn them around and to give them the proper interpretation of the word that will make them call on the God of heaven and have the salvation of the Lord. You will have the salvation of the Lord. I say I. I will have the salvation of the Lord. Be it fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, 
I'm reading from verse 5. Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 5. For this ye know, that no monger, no unclean person, Beshazzar, unclean person, those wives, those women, unclean, those concubines, unclean, those counselors, unclean. And what Daniel was saying is this, you are wedged in the balances as unclean people. And in the sight of God, you are not worthy of heaven. Only Christ can make you worthy. And tonight, I pray, you give your life to the Lord and you become worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No covetous man who is an idolater. No covetous man who is an idolater. A covetous man, he wants money and he makes money the idol. A covetous man, he knows what other people have. He wants to grab what they have. Those things he's coveting becomes the idol. But now he wants to kind of push away all the idols, all the covetousness. He wants to separate from the feast and the company of Belshazzar so that he can get to heaven at last. Has they don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, let no man deceive you. Let no entertainer deceive you. And let no liar of a preacher deceive you. It says with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of your disobedience conversion will come to you today you'll not be a child of disobedience anymore but a person that turns away and says Belshazzar, go your way, I will not follow you. And then, if you have been a woman, and you have been in line with Belshazzar, you say, Belshazzar, eternity is long. I will not continue with you. And you turn, and you repent, and you say, Lord, I come to you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my might. Be not deceived. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. I pray that your life will turn around. I said your life will turn around. Night club, night drinking, night drunkenness, and secret adultery and secret fornication tonight the lord will cleanse and brush off from your life in jesus name that and writing many many take hell perishing that showed that god had waged Beshazzar and the people there and they were found wanting in your own case the judgment of god will pass away from you I said will pass away from you. And you know what? If the preacher is clear, the people responding to the preaching must be clear. That's the purpose. Meshasa was told the judgment of God that had come. He should immediately have fallen on his feet and say, God, I'm sorry for the profanity. I'm sorry for the defilement. I'm sorry for the evil in my life. And mercy would have come. After all, that's how his father, the Nebuchadnezzar, received the mercy of God. But he was still acting like, okay, Daniel, that's good. Bring a chain and hang on his neck. I said, I'll give you gifts. Even though you said you didn't want the gift, I give you this, I give you this. A dying man, a man on his way to hell, offering gift to a preacher of the word of God. We don't need that. The response of your life is what you need. That you will say, Lord, I come. I am sorry for the evil, for the profanity, and for the defilement in my life. Lord, I come just as I am. 
without any excuse Jesus I come to thee and as you come tonight the Lord will forgive you the Lord will save you and the judgment hanging on your head that judgment will vanish away in Jesus name Amen. Point number three now. Point number three, the inevitable fulfillment of awesome, unchangeable prophecies. We're looking at Daniel chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 25. Daniel chapter 5, verse 25. This is that the writing that was written. Many, many. Take you for sin. Look at verse 26. It says, This is the interpretation of the sin. Many God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. God he is the God of all power, he is the God of all decision, and nobody can go a step further, a day further, a week further without the approval and the consent of heaven. And this man had nothing to do with heaven. He didn't relate to the God of heaven. He didn't relate to a Christ from heaven. He didn't relate to the appearance of the fourth one. His appearance is like the Son of God. He didn't relate to the Son of God. He knew of the Spirit, the excellent Spirit. He didn't relate with the excellent Spirit. He had nothing to do with heaven. All right. Since you do not know and you do not accept that the God of heaven is the God. God of all the earth now God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it I pray your life will not finish now I pray your kingdom will not finish now if you connect with the God of heaven if you connect with Christ from heaven, if you connect with the Spirit of God and say, Lord, I've been living my life in isolation, all alone by myself, but now I recognize you as my creator. Now, I recognize Christ as my Savior, my Redeemer. I recognize Christ as my Redeemer and my Lord and my Savior and the Holy Spirit as my helper, as my comforter that comes to help me come to Christ. I will not resist you anymore. A new life will begin for you. A new chapter will begin for you. A new lease of life will begin for you. It will forgive the past and it will set you free and then you will live a profitable life from now on in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, take hail. Thou art which in the balances and not found wanting. Your wage in the balances and you are found wanting. To be wanting means you lack. You don't have the ticket that will make you have a place in that heavenly airplane to take you to the better country. And they say, even your passport, if you have any kind of passport, this one is fake. Where did you get this? This one was issued in a fake office. We have been trying to track down those people issuing days of a passport. Come on here. And they lock the fellow up. But if you really want to get to that country, a better land, Beulah land, land of promise, heaven, you need the passport that is issued by Christ from heaven. Because he died so that he'll make the passage for you to get to heaven. And because of him, you'll become worthy. Tonight, you'll become worthy. Tonight, you become worthy. Look at the man. The centurion came and he said, Master, my servant 
is tormented and vexed at home. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the man said, I am not worthy. Speak the word only. I am wanting, I am lacking, I am not worthy. But if you will accept me, if you will bless me, if you speak your word of healing and your word of salvation and your word of forgiveness and the word of freedom, then my servant shall be healed. And Jesus said, I've not found, no, not no great faith like this in Israel. And he said, because of your faith, I make you worthy. Your servant is healed. And tonight, because of your repentance and because of your soft heart, because of your confession, knowing I am not worthy, I pray that as you give your life to the Lord tonight, your sins will be forgiven. Your sickness will be healed. He will make you worthy. And then he'll write your name in the book of life in heaven. You will be worthy in Jesus' name. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, watch and pray that he may be accounted worthy. That he may be accounted worthy. If you are careless, you say, okay, I hear, but I don't care. I hear, I don't mind, I hear, I'm not going to appeal to heaven. You remain not wanting, you remain unworthy. Watch and pray that ye may be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. And tonight, you'll be worthy. There'll be no lack in your faith. There'll be no lack in your trust. There'll be no lack in your repentance. You'll be worthy tonight in Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen there? And to the angel of the church is man right. I've not found your work perfect in my sight, but thou hast a few names. They shall walk with me in white because they are worthy. A few names, and you can be part of that, part of those a few names that your garment spiritually, the garment of righteousness, is washed white in the blood of the Lamb. And then he says, they will walk with me in white. They are worthy. The Lord make you worthy tonight. The worthiness of Christ will come to your account. And the Lord himself will say, Yes, I've had your prayer. I know you spoke with conviction and you spoke with determination. I will not go on in the lifestyle of Beshazzar, in defilement, in profanity anymore. Lord Jesus, receive me. He will receive you tonight in Jesus' name. But Beshazzar, you are just looking, okay, I hear. He didn't want to respond appropriately and now we're told in verse 28 in verse 28 Paris the kingdom is divided and given to the maids and the passions that night the story ended abruptly your story will not end like that your life will not be wasted like that. Your future will not stop like that. You will continue in the way of the Lord and you come to Christ. You and Christ, you'll be worthy. You and salvation, you'll be worthy. And you and the redemption of the Lord, you'll be worthy in Jesus' name. Lord, make him worthy. Lord, make her worthy and when you are worthy like that heaven will be your home at last in jesus name and while you are here on earth if you're sick it will heal you if you are tormented it will deliver you as you say like the centurion with the centurion lord I am not worthy, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. It will turn your unworthiness to worthiness in Jesus' name. Your lack, it will turn to fulfillment and completeness in Jesus' name. But don't act 
like Belshazzar. Don't remain like Belshazzar, profane, defiling, sinful, incorrigible, and remaining in evil. You turn around to say, Lord, Christ is my worthiness. Christ is my savior. Christ is my redeemer. And I come on the basis of Christ. For my tears forever flow. And my zeal no respite, no. All these for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone must save. It's ready to save you now. Are you ready to be saved? It's ready to forgive you now. Are you ready to be forgiven? It's ready to make you worthy. Are you ready to become worthy? I'm asking a question. Ready? 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 It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. He's the only one that can make us worthy of heaven. Everyone without heavenly age, everyone without the heavenly savior, everyone without the sacrifice of Christ on the cross of Calvary is unworthy. Everyone only worthy of hell. But as you come to Christ tonight and you say, Lord, you are my worthiness. He'll forgive your sin. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You're coming to Christ now. And you're saying, Lord, I give myself to you. I surrender my heart, my life to you. I know with my present life, defilement, sinfulness, iniquity, and with my present corruption in life, I know I am unworthy, unworthy of heaven. But I hand over all those evil things in my life unto Christ, so that you make me worthy. Wherever you are, you want him to make you worthy of salvation, forgiveness, freedom, grace, mercy, heaven, wherever you are, raise up that hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. Online, anywhere you are, here is the moment Christ alone will make you worthy. So, raise up your hand, wherever you are, you are watching over the television, you are listening to the radio, raise up that hand. He'll make you worthy. He'll make you worthy. He, by his worthiness, will pass all that worthiness unto you. Remember, the sinner is not worthy by himself, by herself. A concubine is not worthy by herself. A womanizer is not worthy by himself. A drunkard is not worthy by himself a religious liar is not worthy by himself but as you come to christ and say lord here i am it is christ the savior christ the redeemer that makes you worthy raise up that hand if you're raising up your hand please stand up and identify yourself to the lord god bless you there god bless you there you want to be worthy of heaven you don't want to go to hell when you die you want to be worthy of the goodness of god of the grace of god of the salvation of the lord stand up wherever you are he is the one that will make you worthy he didn't come to entertain you anytime any evening he came to tell you the truth how you can be worthy of the salvation of the Lord by turning away from sin and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ raise up your hand and stand up stand up stand up wherever you are and as you are there tell the Lord oh Lord I turn away from every sin that makes me unworthy and I come to you for forgiveness for freedom for salvation Lord grant me that forgiveness and salvation now tell the Lord tell the Lord the Lord himself will give you his own salvation that makes you worthy amen amen 
Father, I'm praying for you now. Keep up that hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, according to your promise, we know all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And everyone is unworthy, unworthy of heaven, unworthy of salvation. But Christ is our worthiness, I pray, O oh Lord Christ, because of your death on the cross of Calvary. I pray, Lord, forgive them, set them free, give them your salvation in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that the Spirit will bear witness in their heart that although they were wanting before, Christ, by salvation, Christ, by substitution Christ by taking all their sins upon himself has now made them worthy I pray Lord write the name of every one of them in your book of life in heaven in Jesus name confirm the salvation confirm the forgiveness confirm the freedom and make them worthy and when Christ shall come and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive shall be taken up to heaven I pray that these will be among the number that will get to heaven in Jesus name thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus name I pray another amen a global amen the Lord be with you. Keep on standing there. You receive the salvation of the Lord. And now he writes your name among the people that are worthy. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they will give you the step of paper to fill. And you feel correctly. No more lying. No more deception. A new creature in Christ who is worthy now of heaven will not continue the old way. I call on an officiating ministry start tonight uh, to help us for the counseling time. Congratulations. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. Angels are jubilating and celebrating because of you. What a glorious decision you have made tonight. Unforgettable decision. The decision that will begin a new history in your life. Therefore, you attend to the few questions that have been asked of you so that we can help you further. We'll be praying for you and we'll be reaching you, encouraging you Supply the details. You write in capital letters. And the phone numbers, make sure 11 digits. And ensure that you supply all the necessary information. As we are writing your name now, because of the decision, heaven is writing your name in the book of God, in the book of life. What a glorious privilege. What a wonderful privilege. Heaven is rejoicing because of you. Congratulations and you are welcome into the heavenly family. The family of God. The family of the saints you have been hearing about. The family of the people that have gone before. Congratulations. Your joy will be permanent. Your experience will be permanent. Please, our counselors, let's ensure we get the details correctly so that you supply the correct address so that when we pray for you, the prayer will meet you at your very address. I pray the miracle of God will never miss your address in Jesus' name. So therefore, make sure you give us a correct address so that you be a target and a receiver of God's blessings. 
If you have just given your life unto the Lord online, you will see a link under that's below your player. Just click that link and complete the form and send it immediately. We will capture you. Heaven will capture you. The book of life will capture you and you become a candidate, fit, qualified, made worthy for the kingdom of God. What an experience. So therefore, if you are online, do the same thing. Heaven is rejoicing because of you today. The whole of angels are celebrating on your behalf. What a privilege. Counselors, let's go around. Please, let's go far back. Probably we have some that overflow across the fence. Let's ensure we touch everywhere. Once you finish where you are, you can move to the next person close to you. I see some people standing on my right hand side. Please let's attend to them. Please let's do that thoroughly. Even though we are fast about it, but please let's do it thoroughly. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, please send your name, phone number, and your location address via either SMS or WhatsApp to this number. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I take it again. Plus two three four nine one five four four nine four four nine two six three just send your name and your particulars counselors we are waiting for you tonight the mercy of God that saves is the same mercy also that he is and delivers. The complete work of God's mercy will be accomplished in our life tonight in Jesus' name. Mercy for salvation, mercy for healing. And I counsel us after you have finished, don't leave the, you know, the place where you are. Look at the people that have challenges around you. Tonight, there will be galore of testimonies. There will be a pandemonium of joy here tonight. There will be unprecedented celebration tonight. Somebody is saying, Amen there. So therefore, get ready. If you are not being cancelled, bow your head and say, oh Lord, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. The mercy that saves is the same mercy that he is. The Satyrus said, I'm not worthy. But because of his encounter with Christ, he became worthy. Worthy of the salvation, and his servant was healed as well. Double blessing for you. Counselors who are waiting for you, if you are true at your section, you want to see the supervisors raising all the flag to notify us. On the far right, if you are finished, let's see the flag of identification. 
that you are true. Any flag there? At the center here, if you are true, can we see the flag from the supervisors? Let's be fast at it, but let's be thorough about it as well. This is the nucleus of GCK, the gospel to every creature. On my left hand side, if you are through, can you please wave the flag to us so that we can identify that you are true? Can I see any flag up? All right, some people are still standing. Please let's reach to them on time. Right far at the back. Please let's ensure the counselors reach to those people standing at the back. Please signify if you are true. All right, you can see on the right hand side. How about the far, very close to the campus hall? Can we see your flag if there is anyone? Raise it up properly so that you can see. All right. At the center here, at the back. Supervisors, can we see your flag? Please let's be fast about it but also thorough about it. And the rest of us, let me pray. The miracle of mercy will reach unto you tonight. O oh Lord, here am I. Whatever challenge you brought here will not follow you home. The name of Jesus will crush everything tonight. Right at my left hand side, supervisors, can we have an indication you are through? Any hand there? Any flag there? All right. You can see at the front there. At the center. How about the far back? Far, far back. Can you wave to us? All right. We can see right there. We are getting prepared now as our pastor comes up. Miracle of mercy for you tonight. Miracle of mercy for you tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, pleading with him, asking him. In verse 6, it says, and saying, Lord, my servant life at home seek of the palsy, grievously tormented. And then in verse 7, Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. He will come and heal you. Tonight, he has come to heal you. I will come. He will get to you there. He'll get to you there. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. That's all right. He called him Lord. He made him Lord of his life. It was a centurion. And yet, he called him Lord. The moment you call him Lord, Savior, Healer, Deliverer, I surrender my life to you, Lord. I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. No oil, speak the word only. You don't have to come home and lay hands on that person. Speak the word only. The healing word of the Lord is coming to you tonight. 
it will heal you and my servant shall be healed I will be healed I will be healed that tumor will vanish away that blindness will vanish away that paralysis will vanish away and that pile will vanish away that cancer will vanish away tonight my servant my body shall be healed the, close your eyes now lay one hand where you have the challenge and raise up the other hand remember speak the word only and you come with assurance you accept with assurance you receive with assurance my servant shall be healed your healing has come tonight i am not worthy but i call you lord i receive you as lord i know you are the lord of my life every circumstance in my life now that i've taken you as lord your worthiness becomes my worthiness and i shall be healed the lord is coming to you with healing right now <laughs> after the final amen you check up that miracle would have been deposited there Raise up that hand, lay the other hand where you have the challenge here, online, everywhere. Miracle has come. Father, in Jesus' name, you are the God of wonders, the God of power, the God of worthiness, and the God of great performance and manifestation. Come to all your people as they own Jesus and their Lord. Heal them in Jesus' name. That insanity, that madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes and those dim eyes, the Lord touch your eyes right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. The deafness that you have, the dumbness that you have, the Lord is by your side right now. A miracle that loses your tongue. A miracle that opens your deaf ears. Come upon you now in Jesus' name. And all the tumor, all the swelling in your body. Elephantiasis, hernia, uh, fibroid, goiter, hunchback. I command now you are released. Come out in Jesus' name. Ulcer, be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. And that tuberculosis, be healed in Jesus' name. COVID, be healed in Jesus' name. HIV, AIDS, be healed in Jesus' name. All incurable diseases in your body, be taken away right now. Lord, in a definite way, in a spectacular manner give the healing to everyone as we call you lord now in jesus name healing everywhere deliverance everywhere manifestation of your love and mercy and grace everywhere in jesus name you're healed you are healed you are delivered the word has come forth and the word has healed you confirmation in every life right now in jesus name i pray check up yourself your miracle is now there your healing is right there now many many miracles tonight right center let at the back everywhere here and online confirmation in your life wonders without number wonders without number the rain has started falling right now shake yourself your miracle is right there tonight is a night of wonders and uh, we're going to listen to testimonies yours is going to be one 